Welcome back to Defender Chassis. My name's Scott, and today's project is to install a four-link rear suspension in a 70 Camaro. So what we've got here, what the owner of the car has uh, brought us, is a uh, four-link kit. And I'm not sure where he acquired it, but these kits are available on um, on eBay, and uh, although they a lot of times will list a specific application uh, they are pretty much a uh, universal kit uh, and what you typically have to do and what we're going to, have to do here is actually shorten these uh, control arms to, uh, to fit this application in fact the uh, the upper arms are going to have to be shortened quite a bit and as part of that we're going to have to uh, re-thread the ends that's going to require a special setup uh, could be a lot simpler if you had to run equipment but uh, I'll show you what we're going to do and we may actually just send that out. I'm not sure yet. Uh, when we get to that point, um, we'll, we'll make that decision. But as far as I can tell, this kit is made by a company called Helix. And I'll include a uh, link uh, to their website um, in the video description. And uh, th this kit welds on. It's not a bolt-on kit. I know a lot of times for different applications, you can get a specific kit that will, uh, will, will bolt in. They're, of course, much more expensive. So uh, uh, this kit will have to be modified uh, to, uh, to some extent uh, to work. Uh, but that's what we're going to go through here in this video. So let's, uh, I've already started uh, working on the car, getting it prepped to accept this kit. Uh, let's uh, move the camera over there and let me show you what, uh, what I've done so far and uh, get you up to speed with what the, uh, what the plan is. The first uh, thing that we're going to tackle on uh, the installation of this kit is the, uh, the lower mounts and the, uh, the lower control arm. Now this is the forward mount um, for, for that control arm. And the, what the instructions, as limited as they are, what they want you to do is they want you to get the uh, lower control arm uh, horizontal. Now we're limited here because um, you know, this, this frame rail is where it's at, and for this thing to fit, we're actually going to have to trim the bracket a, a, uh, a good bit. What we're going to try to do is we're going to try to get this, this uh, as far forward as possible so we can get as much length uh, in that lower, uh, that, that lower bar as possible. But as far as uh, putting this up and down to try to get that lower bar horizontal, um, we're just, we just don't have, um, we don't have the room to, uh, to, to do anything there. So that's the plan. That's the plan for this. We'll uh, we'll trim these ends to uh, to fit, and then we'll get that tacked up in there. Um, we'll do that for for uh, for both sides, and we'll just tack things in place until we get everything uh, installed and where we want it. And then once we've got that, then we'll go back and final weld everything. Now, the uh, the, the rear uh, the rear bracket that's this piece here also incorporates the shock mount. And so what the instructions want you to do is, in addition, is to keep this rear surface uh, vertical so that you don't have interference with your uh, coilover, coilover shocks. So once these front brackets are installed and we've got the width that we need to, to, um, uh, so that we know what the, uh, the rear brackets uh, also have to be, then we'll clean up this uh, rear axle tube and uh, get these, uh, these brackets fit in place and do the same thing, tack them. And from there, we can um, get a length on our lower bars, and if we choose to, go ahead and get those lower bars cut off and re-threaded uh, to, uh, to fit. Now, one thing I'm doing here uh, to try to get the right pinion angle, this car doesn't have an engine and transmission installed. So there's really no way for me to, um, to install this, this setup with the correct pinion angle. Um, so what, I'm, what I've done is I have left the uh, leaf spring suspension in the car so that the factory uh, pinion angle is maintained. Now the hope is, and I, and I think it's a pretty good bet, that if, if it's not correct we're going to be close enough that we've got enough adjustment in these bars that uh, we can then correct the, uh, the pinion angle. And if you've noticed that these uh, lower, these um, uh, traction bars, are pointing the wrong direction. The reason that that's, uh, that, that's been done is because uh, I don't have a lower plate for, 
uh, for these leaf springs. And with them installed the way they were originally, I couldn't get the lift to support the car far enough back for me to be safe. So what I did was I went ahead and had these arms forward and got it up, swapped these around, set the car back down, and then moved these, moved these arms back so that uh, the arms for the lift are out of the way of, uh, of, of the work that we're doing. So let me go ahead and, uh, and get this front bracket on, get this rear bracket tacked on. And if uh, I'll include some pictures, a little slideshow of uh, what the modifications look like, and uh, I'll get back with you with the uh, show you what we got, and then go on to the uh, to the next step. Okay, so here we are. We got uh, both uh, front brackets and rear brackets tacked on, and it was simply a matter of uh, contouring these uh, upper ears to uh, to fit. And one thing we did once we got one side done was we measured from the axle tube uh, forward to the edge of this hole so that we, we could uh, maintain that dimension on the other side. Turns out that really wasn't too much of a, uh, of a problem. Uh, and so we went, just went ahead and got these tacked in for now. And the rear brackets. The rear brackets have a uh, shock mount on the rear face. Instructions that come uh, with this kit. Uh, indicate they want that bracket to be uh, straight up and down. So um, what we did was we got both of these front brackets and measured from uh, outside of one bracket to the inside of the other, which effectively gives us the center to center dimension, and then used the uh, spring purchase and uh, measured the uh, distance between those, and then um, uh, you know just did did the math to figure out where where these brackets should go. Uh, use the level to get them get them plumb and then uh, tack them on. Now from there, uh, went ahead and uh, took the uh, lower control arms and uh, rotated those up to uh, to mark the end of the threads. And uh, the instructions uh, say something to the nature of um, that um, uh, two thirds of the threads should. Um, uh, should should uh, engage the tube uh, for maximum strength, but really what you need to do uh, on these is you need at least as much thread depth as the diameter, which in this case is three quarters of an inch. But you also want some adjustment. So what I did was uh, I measured the thread length and subtracted three quarters of an inch, and then split what was left uh, between the jam nut and that dimension to um, uh, to then add to that three quarters to add to that length of, uh, of this tube and that maximizes the amount of uh, adjustment that I've got uh, forward and, uh, and, and, and backward. So that pretty much takes care of the, of the uh, lower control arms. Let me move the camera and we'll talk about what we're going to do on the, uh, on the upper ones. Or I guess one other thing, um, the, you can see here that I've got a 4x4 uh, supporting the rear end and I've got the lift um, lowered so that these pads are actually not supporting the car. That puts as much weight on these springs as possible. Now because there's no motor in the car and because of the position of the front arms, this doesn't actually recreate the actual position of these, of these springs. In fact, by uh, my measurements, uh, I actually measured right height of the car before I started the project which isn't realistic either because there's no glass in the car and there's no, but you know, this just gets us, gets us close. And you know, with the adjustment on this stuff, you're gonna, you know, you should be able to, um, uh, to get everything corrected um, once, once the car is, is, uh, is complete. Um, but the, we're about an inch shy of where we started um, uh, because of uh, the dif difference in the weight transfer. Uh, but you can see that, um, these arms aren't perfectly horizontal, uh, but some of that will be corrected. Like, like I said, at least at least an inch. These will be at least up to here, and, and probably um, you know even, even even further. So we'll be pretty close to, to horizontal when uh, when we're done. So let's move the camera, take a look at the backside, and what we're going to do with the uh, with the upper mounts. I got the car lowered down. And I got the weight uh, back off of the uh, the axle, and what we've got here is uh, this upper bracket. It's going to have to mount to this frame uh, somewhere in, in this location right here. Now, you can see, or if you can't see, there's a little gap here, so we can't actually get this bracket slid back clear back against that frame. 
So what we're going to have to do is, is trim, um, trim this backside. And in addition, uh, what we may do is actually trim it so that we get a little more of an angle on it uh, because the length of this upper, upper control arm is going to be, be so short. So to lengthen that, we're going to uh, tilt this this way. And then <clears throat> the other end has got a couple of tabs so that they can be, and they will also have to be fit uh, something like this. Of course, of course, facing the, the other direction, and those will have to be trimmed. So that's the next step. Uh, and what we're going to do, um, because we'd like to try to get both these control arms at the same angle, is from this position, we're going to measure the, uh, the drop in this front control arm so that we can have the same, the same setup here. From this upper pivot to the lower pivot, we want to be the same difference in elevation so that when this axle comes up, that both the upper control arm and the lower control arm will be on the same, uh, the same plane. Now, because of the difference in length, that doesn't necessarily happen you know, at, the, at, the, at a, lower, uh, a, a lower setting or, or above. So, let me go ahead and see if I can get one of these trimmed up and uh, fit up and um, uh, get back with you. And by the way, I've already knocked off uh, brackets that were welded to the top of this axle for uh, brake fittings and things of that nature. So those will have to be relocated when this car is uh, final assembled. So let me get this uh, bracket fit up. I'll uh, bring you back and let you see what, uh, what that looks like. 